In July 2022, ZWO released a new camera, the SI585MC. However, soon after release, they changed a couple of specs. And as someone who's published test videos with this uh, camera, I started receiving messages asking if I knew why ZWO had made these changes, basically. So in today's video, I'll be doing some practical testing to help us understand why these changes were made. Since release, ZWO's published specs for the world depth increased from 40 kV to 47 kV uh, for each pixel, so 18% more light than previously thought, whereas the HCG switching point changed from a gain 150 to gain 252, and this is something I can actually put to the test in this video. So here I took 180 second, three minute light frames of the Andromeda Galaxy with gain 150, and then I repeated the same for gain 252, so we can see the difference. Despite only being able to fit precisely off of the Andromeda Galaxy in the camera's field of view, I thought this would be a worthwhile object because it's got a very high dynamic range with a bright core and dark, dusty spiral arms out towards the other side. So quite a gradient of uh, different brightnesses. When comparing resulting images at gain 150 and 252, I can see more structure in the shots at 252 without a noticeable increase in noise. There is also increased contrast and perceived definition in the outer dust lanes and the dwarf satellite Galaxy M32 appears brighter in the image also. I also wanted a comparison with another object that I could completely frame within the field of view of the camera at 600mm focal length, and the uh, nearby Triangulum Galaxy M33 was uh, good enough to oblige me on this, so I swung over to that. The Gain 150 image exhibited some star trailing, however. Um, it turned out that there wasn't really enough time to repeat this because of, you can probably guess, the sky conditions, the clouds came in. However, this aside, I do think the Gain 252 image still looks richer. Even this single 108 second sub-exposure with a bit of levels and curves applied will look probably as good as any proper image I've done in the past, uh, you know, certainly a number of years ago. So for a single sub, I think it's quite amazing, really. I still think there's enough here to draw some conclusions, and I personally think Gain 252 shots are noticeably better than Gain 150. They show the same level of noise, but the objects, in this case galaxies, are more apparent in the image with increased brightness and contrast. I'll be using Gain 252 for my deep sky images from now on, and I can understand why ZWO decided to revise the high conversion gain switch in specs, looking at my results at least anyway. As it happens, I got the chance to ask ZWO why this change actually happened. ZWO saw my previous videos and got in touch to ask if they could publish and share my shots with their team and on their Facebook page and I got the impression they didn't fully realise how good this little camera was for deep sky imaging, so it's kind of win-win all round really. Whilst in touch I couldn't resist being nosy and asking about the change in high conversion gain settings, so I mentioned that I've been messaged about this by people, and it's also been discussed on forums. Someone from the ZWO marketing team were quick to get back to me, and the simple answer is that they made a mistake in their initial testing, so they updated their specs after realising that the camera was slightly better than they previously thought, with better well depth, and um, that you get better results at 252 as opposed to gain 150. As a comparison, it would be interesting to compare these results with the player on your own a C cam, as it has the same Sony IMX585 sensor. Looking at the Player One product page, their graphs indicate optimal gain. The HCG switching point occurs at about 180, so I'd be keen to see gain 180 shots compared to the gain 150 and 252 shots of the ZWO cam. Indeed, if gain 180 turns out to be the best setting for the Player One, this obviously differs to the ZWO, showing that there is more to this than just the sensor and the cameras have more apart from each other than just the body design. Anyway, I do understand this is a slightly niche video, and I won't keep making videos that go massively deep diving into the specs like this, because I do cover lots of different types of astronomy content, but I think it's worthwhile for those people that are asking, and hopefully it kind of puts this to rest a little bit. There's no big conspiracy why they changed the the, um, the specs. They simply made a mistake, and they, um, own, they owned it and changed them for the good of the customer so they can get the most out of their camera and I, I personally appreciate that. Um, so yeah, that's all it is. Thank you if you made it this far through the video. Please consider subbing if you haven't already and a like is always very much appreciated. As always, a massive thank you to my channel members, Dan the Man, Four Grapples and Ziggy Friends for helping support the channel. Massively appreciate it and I'll always give you guys a shout out on every single video because that's how much it means to me. 
And if this video has piqued anyone's interest in the ZWSI 585MC camera, please click on this video to take a look at my first proper images taken with it.